and welcome to You Talking to Me. It's the second time that finance minister of Eurozone did not reach an agreement with Greece on how to go on with their bailout program. Each side is blaming the other one for not being ready to compromise. What does this mean for Europe and what will happen next? This is our topic today and I'm very happy to welcome in our studio Mrs. Bernadette Segol. She is the General Secretary from the European Trade Union Confederation. Good, Good morning. morning. And we have uh, Mr. Gregory Claes from Bruegel Think Tank. Hello, Mr. Claes. Hello. And we are joined by Olivier Henrion from our Belgian partner, RTBF. Bonjour, Olivier. Bonjour. And on the phone, there's Florin Orban from the Romanian partner of Euronne Plus. Uh, bonjour, Florin. Bonjour, hello. Mrs. Uh, Segol, according to your confederation, uh, the change of government in Greece is an opportunity for all Europe. You wrote that very shortly after the yeah. elections. You said that this is a possibility to re-evaluate the economic and social policies and to take a new path. Um, yesterday, we didn't have uh, really the impression that the two sides were getting closer. So would you write the same thing today? I would. I would certainly, uh, because um, what's happening in Greece is something that is not surprising. You cannot cut uh, 30% uh, of the wages of people and uh, have a, a drop in GDP of 25% or more without having uh, uh, social consequences. We all always say that the, the policies that were carried were leading to social unrest and uh, social destabilization, and this is uh, what has been happening. Now, We know that the discussions um, in the fine, between the finance ministers and, and, the, and the Greek are very tough. But this is a very tough negotiation. Is, uh, is it re realistic what Syriza is asking for? Look, I don't think we should say is it realistic or not realistic. We are in a very tough negotiation. And both parties uh, have a very tough line. Uh, and we are, as trade unions, negotiating and we know that uh, there need to be to have the, the, the level very high if you want to reach an agreement. I also think that uh, both Greek government and the European Union have to reach an understanding and they have to uh, get to a point where um, uh, they, they do the best for uh, the people. Uh, so I, I believe that the current situation is not as blocked as it seems and uh, that they will find the necessary Uh, compromise. Mr. Claes, you seem to agree that the situation is not as blocked. Who is asking for too much here? No, I, I quite agree with Mrs. Uh, Segal. In a way, I think uh, it's the first time that uh, a government has been uh, uh, democratically elected that, that question and refused the policies that have been implemented in the last four years. And I think, it's, uh, as, as uh, Mrs. Segal said, I think it's, uh, it's the right time to, to reevaluate those, uh, those policies. So I don't think that on the substance they are asking too much. I think that the, the new Syriza government, and in particular Mr. Varoufakis, is quite uh, right on the substance. Maybe there is a kind of problem of communication communication between the two parties. Uh, it's true that on one side we have a, a, a new government that is quite unexperienced and maybe sometimes have some communication problem. And on the other side we have like a tough, uh, quite un un unflexible uh, uh, Eurogroup uh, um, team. So, so in, in a way maybe it's, it's more because of the communication than on the substance. Because uh, what, what, uh, what is asked by the government, uh, the, new government the new Greek government is quite, uh, is quite normal. I I would say. So you think um, it would be good if Eurogroup finance minister would go in this direction? more than they did yesterday. I think that uh, that was the main point uh, of the finance minister of the Eurozone. They didn't want to, uh, to have an haircut on the, on the debt, and that's already accepted by, by, the, by the Greek government. So I think uh, they are already in the middle ground. So I think now the problem is more on the semantic than on the substance itself. But uh, if we look at the draft that was not, uh, has not been signed yesterday, mm -hmm. it, uh, it was quite tough, though, on, on, on several points. It says, for example, 
that Greece should work in close agreements with European partners in tax policy, privatization, labor markets, reforms. That is clearly not what Syriza was promising during the election campaign. Mrs. Mrs. I think on taxes, I think that Syriza has been very clear that, uh, uh, yes, taxation has to be put right in Greece. I mean, there are many points where the reforms that are uh, that the Syriza government wants are, are fine. I mean, on taxation, who uh, wants to continue? Labor with? market reforms? Well, we don't want the labor market reform. That's, that's clear. There have been so many and so many that failed that this is especially a reform that cannot be continued. But there are other reforms that this government is, is offering and that would uh, they would bring results. I mean, the, the tax in particular, the fact that you should have registration of your properties and so on. So, uh, you know, it, reforms are not a block. Uh, we have to see which reforms and for whom they are going to work. What is absolutely clear is that they cannot continue putting the burden on the people. The limit is reached. I'd like to introduce an, uh, a post from our Facebook uh, page here. Whitey Giant wrote or uh, is asking, uh, can you live with uh, 500 euros? He's referring to the situation in Greece. No one can. Something is going so wrong. Let's give him, Alexis Tsipras, a chance there is nothing left to lose. Olivier, you were in Greece during the election campaign and uh, in fact people voted to get rid of the bailout program, didn't they? Yes, the Greek voted against uh, the, the bailout program, but they also voted uh, to get back their sovereignty, to get back their dignity. And I spoke earlier this morning with some people that I met there just to check if uh, the situation uh, was exactly the same before the election mm -hmm. and now. And indeed, yes, they, and they are very, very supportive to uh, to the Tsipras government. Basically, what they say is that the medicine that has been given to them is too strong and has poisoned them. So therefore, Gregory Klass, can we explain that the current clash between the Greek and the 18 other uh, partners of the Eurozone uh, areas uh, can be explained by the fact that uh, uh, the, the, the Europeans don't want to admit that they've gone maybe uh, in the wrong direction. And in other words, is the situation blocked by the fact uh, that uh, uh, some European has have adopted a, a, a dogmatic ideology? No, I, I agree that um, that it seems that they, they are quite inflexible on, on, on this point. Um, for example, the IMF, that was also part of the Troika, have admitted that uh, the policies that were prescribed uh, from 2010 to 2014, especially in Greece, were, were too strong, that the fiscal consolidation was too quick, uh, that they, they have underestimated the, the negative impact on, uh, on, the, on the social negative impact, but also the macroeconomic negative impact. So it's worth that on, on one side, the IMF is accepting uh, to, to say, okay, Okay, we have made some mistake and maybe we should uh, uh, do it differently. And on the other side, the ministers of the Eurozone, they don't seem ready yet to accept that they have made some mistakes and that they have prescribed the, the wrong uh, uh, medicines. Uh, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, it's more a political problem. And, and, and I don't really understand why, especially in a country like France, that, uh, for example, the, the, the French government was elected in, 2002, in 2012 with the promise to rebalance Europe and to change as ideological bias Uh, towards austerity and uh, now they don't play the, the roles that they should play uh, in uh, counterbalancing maybe the more northern countries uh, like uh, Netherlands or Germany in uh, saying okay we should stop with the austerity uh, program we should go for, for growth policies so I don't really understand why, why, is, why, is there su why there is such uh, an agreement between the 18 ministers I think there should be some uh, different position across countries On the other end, Bernadette Segol, uh, the European partners of, of Greece stress that a contract is a contract. So how do you conciliate uh, respect of a contract and the expression of a democratic vote? There, there is a margin for implementation of that contract. I mean, if, if, you're, if the, the partner who has signed the contract is uh, just collapsing, and then you, you've got to uh, maybe uh, look at it again, look at your contract again. And uh, I, I want to um, you know, make some comments on what was said before. Uh, why are, are they not moving on that? Uh, I, I think there are some cultural background to uh, um, the German style auto liberalism. Auto liberalism is uh, an idea, an ideology which says that the state has to have rules to uh, govern. 
free market. The problem is, and that is what has been implemented in the EU with the social market economy. Now, the problem is, if you get those rules wrong, then you get you, you have a problem and this is exactly what is happening it's it's uh, the the power of uh, the german economy and of the of germany is very big and and i think that uh, gradually uh, i hope that gradually the idea that uh, european uh, state member states cannot continue like that is going to trigger in, you know, they, they, it will get in their head that this is uh, absolutely not working, that they need investment, that they need to have another policy. Okay, at this point, in another uh, Facebook post, maybe from uh, Annika from Germany, uh, she says that we should show more solidarity with Greek people in Germany. We just try to save our investments. The debate shouldn't begin by this point of view. And solidarity is uh, truly an issue in this. And Florin ha has a question on that. Florin, go ahead. Yes, I do. Mrs. Bernadette Segol, as uh, it was already said, the Tsipras team is facing these days a huge pressure from Brussels. Speaking concretely about uh, solidarity, does your organization, the EQC, imagines or plans any concrete action in support of the measures against austerity to be engaged by the new elected Greek authorities? Let me quote um, um, the treaty, the Article 3 of the treaty, which says that the Union shall promote economic, social and territorial cohesion and solidarity amongst member states. I think we should write that on the table of the finance ministers. The European Trade Union Confederation has always been in solidarity with the Greek people on the question of austerity, but not only with the Greek people. Okay, we are almost at the end. Uh, last question uh, to Mr. Kles. Um, you said it's all about words or it's uh, much about words. So Grexit is not an option anymore for you? No, I think uh, Grexit could happen by accident if we don't find a, uh, uh, a conclusion to this negotiation. But I, I still give a very low probability to, to this event I, I, because first, the Greek government wants to stay in the Eurozone, uh, the Greek people wants to stay in the Eurozone, and I hope that the uh, 18 other finance minister wants Greece to, to stay in the Eurozone. So everybody wants, wants, this to, to, wants Greece to stay in the Eurozone. So if it happens, it's only because the negotiation would fail and that they cannot find a compromise. But uh, As I was saying before, I think uh, this, on the substance they can, they can, they, they would be able to find a compromise. And for example, on the reforms, I think there are some reforms that are quite important uh, for for the European creditors, like uh, tackling uh, corruption, uh, tackling uh, tax evasion. And I think, I think the, uh, the the new Greek government should really talk about that, show that they are ready, uh, not like the previous government, to, to tackle those issues. Okay, so this is clearly going to be the topic for the rest of the week. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Segol. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Thank you, Olivier. Thank you, Florian. Thank you all. And see you soon on You Talking to Me.